implicitly what we're saying is there's a lot you're not seeing. You're not seeing all the things that it's incredibly uncomfortable to see. You're not seeing all the ways in which you, all the things that you build to protect and defend yourself uh, in the face of the, ex the internal experience that fundamentally you're not good enough. Hello, Sounds True friends, and welcome in this episode of Insights at the Edge. My guests are Tony Schwartz and Kimberly Manns. Let me tell you a little bit more. Kimberly Manns is the CEO of H3 Diversity, a consulting firm that enables leaders to bring their whole selves, head, heart, and hands to the cultivation and creation of inclusive leadership inclusive teams and inclusive organizations. Kimberly's here with Tony Schwartz. Tony, someone I've known for a long time, something like two and a half decades. He's a journalist, a best-selling author, and the founder and CEO of The Energy Project, a consulting firm that helps individuals and organizations more skillfully manage their energy so they can thrive in a world of relentlessly rising demand and complexity. Together, Kim and Tony have created a new audio series with Sounds True. It's called The Reckoning. Why are you who you are and who can you become? And here to start, Tony and Kim, I wanna have you address something you say at the very beginning of The Reckoning. You say the work of the reckoning is to see more of what you're not seeing and feel more of what you're not feeling. Oh, wow, that's a lot. That's a, that's a big, tall order. So if you could tell me each what you mean by that, see what we're not seeing. I mean, there's so much we're not seeing. Feel what we're not feeling. Well, there's a reason I'm not feeling it. Thank you very much. How is this the work of the reckoning? So if you think about, Tammy, childhood development, it happens kind of automatically. And what happens actually is that over time, you see more and you feel more. You're conscious of more. And so that's why if you are a, uh, you have a house uh, and you've got a 10-year-old and a five-year-old in it, and you happen to walk down the street to get something, and the house catches on fire, you want the 10-year-old to be in charge, not the five-year-old, because the 10-year-old almost, in almost every single case, is going to be able to see more and is therefore going to be able to handle it with more skills and more capacity. If it's a 15-year-old and a 10-year-old, same thing applies. You want the 15-year-old instead of the 10-year-old. But the thing is, that around 18 or 19 or 20, we hit this moment in our lives where the constant increase in what we can see and in our own growth and development slows and it slows really considerably. And what happens is that we shift into something we call confirmation bias. So we've spent all these years as we've been growing up trying to develop an identity, a sense of who we are. And what, what we've discovered is that now we want to be grown-ups. We're, we're tired of being growing ups. You know, what comes to mind when I think about those questions is I think about how Tony and I first met. We met right after the murder of George Floyd. And everybody was grappling with the question of, you know, what do you do in this moment? How can I be of service in the moment? How do you actually solve the problems of all of the polarities that we're now facing as a society? And I think as he and I started to have the conversation, and it was a much larger group than, than he and I, that it became increasingly clear that at least one of the answers was to help all of us be bigger human beings and therefore better leaders. So how do we help people get beyond their own mental model, which gets us into these either or polarities that we've been experiencing so much in our society lately to expand into something larger that not only allows us to uh, deepen into more of who we are, 
but then also see more of who each other are and actually see others in ourselves. And so it was this big dream that we had. As, and then we started asking the question, how do we do that? And so it began this long conversation and journey of what would a leadership program look like that really helped individuals see more and be more. Now, of course, you could create a leadership program, each of you on your own, and yet you decided to create the reckoning together. Why? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, originally, uh, we created a version of the reckoning that uh, Kim joined uh, in the pilot version of it. Um, and we were, because of what had happened with George Floyd, our original thought was, we're really interested in how people uh, grow, can grow and develop on their own. And then suddenly we were faced with a situation where it was so obvious that we needed to be also thinking about this in terms of how people connect with other with others. And we were uh, taking Kim and about uh, a dozen other people through this process. And at a certain point in it, Kim came to us and said, you know, we're starting to talk about race and about identity and about, uh, you know, belonging. And essentially, she said, she could speak for herself, but essentially she said, you know, you, you can't really do this by yourself. You really don't have uh, the lived experience to be able to reflect back uh, in a way our experience, because the group was half people of color, um, in a way that resonates for us, you need to be able to have another perspective in this. Uh, and I think both my daughter Emily and I realized, yep, that, that makes a lot of sense. And so we started talking with Kim about what it would look like if we brought our if we brought the two sets of skills and experiences together. And uh, it was off to the races from there. And when yeah. it comes to this notion of seeing more and feeling more, I wonder how working together has, uh, if you will, pressurized you both to do that. And if you can share a bit about that. We're both smiling because it's been um, an amazing journey between the two of us. And we've had both these extreme highs and some honestly some lows because of the differences um, in our lived experiences, the differences in our mental models, uh, the differences in how we approach the work. Um, and so there's been a lot of rupture and repair between us, um, all in the service of thinking about what really um, needs to happen in order for us to bring this broad view of what leadership could could look like. So um, not only have we figured out like what do our participants need to see and feel more, we've had to go through the process ourselves individually and with each other. You know, I'd also add, Tammy, that when we did, when you think about this notion of seeing more, implicitly what we're saying is there's a lot you're not seeing. What is it you're not seeing? You're seeing you're not seeing all the things that it's incredibly uncomfortable to see. You're not seeing all the ways in which you, all the things that you build to protect and defend yourself uh, in the face of the, the internal experience that fundamentally you're not good enough because that's such a universal experience for people to greater and lesser degrees in different ways. And so you get, a whole range of things, starting with belief systems and mindset and biases and habits and rationalizations, all of these things that are going on inside you, mostly unconsciously, that are determining how you show up in the world, but that you mostly don't realize. So really, seeing more is about embracing all of who you are. It's about the capacity to look at both the, the, the best and the worst of your own instincts and behaviors and to accept all of it. Because the reality is when you can truly embrace all of who you are, you have nothing left to defend. 
And what a spectacular saving of energy it is not to be spending as much of it in defense. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a lot more about that. But before we get there, Tony, I want to ask you just a very direct question, which is, did you have to reckon with certain aspects of white male privilege and power as part of even the creation of the reckoning? And how did that process go for you by partnering with Kim and sharing the power of the stage to create this program? Well, it's on that reckoning is ongoing. <laughs> we're we're I'm still in that reckoning. Um, you know, I think it, it was a huge factor and and remains so. And it's you know, it's first and foremost, it's about race because race is so inescapably an issue. You know, if you are a person of color, you walk out of your house every morning and the world is going to confront you with the fact that you're a person of color. If you are white and you had my experience, you probably walked out of the your house fairly oblivious to the idea that there would be any issue in your walking down the street and showing up in the world. So oblivious, I think, about that would probably describe um, the way I, I, I came to this at the beginning. I, my heart was in the right place. You know, I grew up with a mother who was actually a civil rights pioneer, um, also a, a fem, you know, a very uh, active and well-known feminist. So I grew up in a household where these were issues that we talked about, but that's very different than actually having the experience of dealing with that in the world. And half this group, as I said, were people of color, the person who runs the energy project now is a, a, a woman of color. Um, many of our facilitators are people of color. So this is this is uh, an issue that um, I have felt compelled to engage with uh, a lot. It's not only though uh, race, it's also gender, it's age, it's geography, it's uh, power, as you say. So, for example, I am the person who you know owns and runs the energy project. So, by definition, there's a power dynamic that's different, and I'm constantly in the in the experience of is my concern here. Kim has referred to the fact that we've had our ups and downs. Is my mm -hmm. is the way I'm what I'm feeling and the way I'm showing up because um, you know. Is, is, there a, is there a part of me that isn't seeing uh, what the impact is of, of my, you know, of my power, um, what, the diff, what the impact is of being, uh, you know, white versus black, male versus female, you know, older versus younger? Yeah, it's, um, it's all part of it. 